All right. Um, I'm here to talk about uh, how Matrix Medical Network went through this journey of adapting to Couchbase and Couchbase Mobile. And um, a little bit uh, background about me. I'm a Director of Application Development and Techno Technical Solutions at Matrix. And uh, uh, my background has been Java, JavaScript technologies. And uh, over the past few years, I've been working with mobile and mobile hybrid uh, technologies with adapting to Couchbase and Couchbase Mobile. Uh, throughout my career, I have uh, implemented several different types of architecture uh, platforms uh, uh, for like contact centers and healthcare and things like that. So um, a little bit about Matrix and what we do. I don't know if you've heard about Matrix Medical Network. So we uh, provide, uh, we are the leading in-home health assessment providers in the nation uh, today. And we work with uh, various different health plans. All, uh, all the big names are, we work with those, uh, they are our clients. And uh, we get a set of member feed from them. And we do in-home health assessments and we visit skilled nursing, nursing facilities to do health assessments on these members. So that being said, we have a nationwide set of like 5,800 nurse practitioners. Uh, uh, who go in home and they start doing uh, uh, health assessments on these members and uh, also they visit skilled nursing facilities. So uh, when, when I say they are going in home, uh, they actually spend a good amount of time, like, like uh, about like 45 to 60 minutes with that member, which you do not get in a typical standard doctor's office visit nowadays, right? So, and these NPs, when we, uh, we, ta we take care of our members and we make sure these members have, uh, you know, if, if they are in an emergency or they are in a critical situation, even if the NP as a clinician, right, they have like six to seven appointments, six to seven visits that they have to go uh, in some rural areas where it is snowing, our NPs do not leave their homes. They make sure that the members are taken care of. So they make sure they have, sometimes they have to call 911, sometimes they have to call their PCP, sometimes we have to call their care managers and say, hey, your member, you know, the member is having trouble, they need blood, they need oxygen or whatnot, right? So that being said, we want to make sure that we support our NPs. And uh, this week is a nurses week. So if anybody is here from clinical background, uh, it's like happy nurses week to everybody. Uh, so uh, we want to make sure that they're not challenged with the work that they do. Their, their application that they use is not something that they dread of. Hey, I'm not, I, I'm not able to do my job because they're already going through such hard times in their daily lives, right? And another thing is they go to rural areas. So we are in the US, but we think we have a lot of, uh, you know, we're great connectivity, a lot of uh, network availability, but there are places where there is no 3G, there is no 4G, there is no Wi-Fi, and there is no satellite reception even. So we have uh, a compliance issue where we have to track their location wherever they are, because we want to make sure the NP is just, just not sitting at home and filling these assessments. They are really going to the member's home and really doing what they're supposed to. So there are places where we do not even have connectivity in the, in the United States. So that being said, uh, now you know why we, are, why we have to give an application to them, which, is, uh, which we had to go this direction, uh, you'll see in my next slide. So we recently acquired Healthfair, and it's been a successful year for Matrix. Uh, healthfare is a mobile uh, clinic. We have mobile buses all across the United States where uh, you know they were in retail business before and now they've started working with health plans where they do, where they do diagnostic testing. That means they can go, you can walk up to the mobile bus and get an EKG done or based on, you know, you have, uh, you know, uh, you smoke and they have logic, uh, something to trigger that they go do a, you know, EKG or there are a lot of tests that they do as diagnostic tests. So we recently acquired mobile buses, uh, mobile uh, uh, health fair, which does mobile clinics. So uh, the, uh, when we call the members, they have an option either to go home, uh, ask the NPs to come home and do an assessment, or they can choose to go to this mobile clinic to do this assessment. So um, I want to talk about what we had in the past. So Matrix has been uh, using this as a mobile application uh, for the past five years. And uh, since last June, our journey has been like uh, eight to 10 months of working on Couchbase to move to the new platform. So, but we were doing this business before. So we had a mobile application 
uh, in our legacy platform, which was doing this before. So uh, that being said, our uh, couch base, our, our solution was a SQLite instance. So all these uh, practitioners use this uh, tablets to go capture data, right? So we had a SQLite instance and we had a SQL Server instance. So we had to make sure that the application works offline even then. So it was not off working offline is not new to us. So we had to make sure that it works offline, but it was built on native native Android uh, platform. So that means we lack the flexibility of uh, creating uh, dynamic uh, JSON forms and JSON templates like how we have today. So um, uh, one of the things we had to build is the sync management. So we had to build all the sync manage from, uh, management from ground up. So the SQLite server uh, and SQL server, uh, SQLite and SQL server would sync constantly back and forth. Uh, so we had uh, 15 to 20 you know, native Android services that were running in the background, which was syncing data back and forth from uh, uh, what appointments the NPs have to see, what data I have to sync back from the SQL server. Do I have to worry about Delta sync or do I have to worry about full sync? What, what data has to be pre-populated on these members when the NPs go and see these members? So all this had to be done. A lot of code. We had separate teams just to work on SOAP and REST uh, endpoints and REST web services, a development team to work on all this stuff. So a lot of ongoing maintenance. So basically, we work with health plans. And these health plans want to know their members better. So the more they know about members, more they know about their health conditions, they can treat them better. Right? So they ask us, hey, can you get me this data about my members? Can I, can I get this data about my set of members? So how do you provide a user interface and also a flexible schema that can change as per your client needs? Right? You cannot keep changing this for all the clients. Uh, that's the problem we had, which it had a static schema, and we couldn't just expand it and however the client wanted us to. So those are the challenges we had. And it was close to Android platform. So we couldn't go on a web browser. We couldn't go on an iOS device. So if we were to acquire any new companies uh, from a business point of view and we were to use another set of users who do not have an Android or uh, iOS devices and ask them to work for us, we did not have a way to do like BYOD. You can bring your own device and download our app and start working. So this was the challenges we had. So uh, what we did was back in 2016, when I was here at Couch Connect, we were still at uh, you know POC phases of uh, going with Couchbase and what would we do? So in 2016, as a business, uh, uh, the clinical business stakeholder, so everything is goes through the clinical committee and they push this down to us. As, as technology leaders and clinical stakeholders, we went, we sat down and we thought, what do we want Matrix to do in the next few years? How is Matrix going to diversify? Is it going to uh, are we going to have more and more uh, uh, diversification? Are we going to add more products? Today we do comprehensive health assessments. Are we going to do more products, like expand it to pediatrics, expand it to a, uh, we do exchange population too, commercial too right now, but maybe expand it to another set of like closing quality visits, like some, some other new products that we diversify with. And are we going to acquire more companies where we want a stable platform that we can scale and put more on it? So um, basically, we, we decided we uh, all came to a conclusion that the, uh, you know whatever technology we had today, it couldn't, it, it could scale. It was doing okay for five years, but it did not have the flexibility that we needed. And again, we are not like a big data shop, so it, ours is a very specific use case. So for us, the most important thing was to make sure that our app works offline. So we had to make sure that uh, wherever the NPs are, they should be relieved that they do not have to worry about, oh, did my data, do I have to do anything more to send this critical information back there? So, so if uh, we, when they call their care managers or their uh, PCPs, they do make a phone call and say, hey, it's emergent, your member needs help, but we also need to send some supporting documentation back. So once the, once the connectivity has reached, once they are, uh, they are connected either to any Wi-Fi or any 3G, 4G, is the data syncing back? Are they going to, uh, do they have to take extra effort to do something or they can be really and say, okay, now I'm in a connected zone and my data is back. I don't have to worry about it. 
So, and we wanted it to be, we didn't want it to be logged on to an Android device at all because we wanted the same app to run on different platforms. We didn't want to write separate set of code for this. So we, we definitely wanted something which can go on all devices. And again, I spoke about a large number of client requests to know more and more about their member population. So we wanted a flexible uh, schema and flexible user interface that could actually render whatever templates we needed and collect the data. And also the app needs to be smart enough, right? You, uh, nowadays we have requests comes uh, uh, from various stakeholders. They say if they choose one, two, and three options, uh, do you propose this? This is your problem. This is your diagnosis. So it's more and more work on the application and building smart logic. The app is more intelligent. So all that you, we couldn't achieve by having a fixed uh, layout uh, as a template. And we were capturing XML. We used to store it as a big blob in our SQL server, which we had to get rid of because we had a lot of issues with querying it and you know, sending the data back to the client so that they could ingest it. So uh, who all we evaluated? Uh, so uh, of course, MongoDB and Cassandra, big players in the market, uh, very stable systems. But uh, the problem was we did not have any support for syncing. So we had to eliminate that because we, actually, we really, really wanted that syncing. And Couch and Pouch, if you guys have not heard of that, uh, another good candidate. Uh, Couch and Pouch syncs just as Couchbase Lite and CouchDB, uh, Couchbase. But the only thing is there is no channel support for Couch and Pouch. And also, it is a browser database. It depends on how much local storage you have for Firefox or IE. And uh, you know, it, if something is lost, your data is lost, you, you don't have an embedded device database like CBLite that you can go back and retrieve it. And another thing is, yeah, high availability, which you don't get uh, as you get it in Couchbase. And nickel queries, you cannot do that. So a lot of more perks of you know, using an enterprise uh, uh, way, uh, system like Couchbase. So, so that's why that was an obvious choice that, yeah, we wanted to go with Couchbase. So Couchbase, solu the solution, Couchbase Mobile, Sync Gateway, and Couchbase Server, I think we've heard. Uh, uh, since yesterday, like how, what Couchbase uh, Lite and uh, Couchbase Server does. So basically, the Sync Gateway takes care of everything. It's a non-persistent, nothing gets stored in Sync Gateway. It's just a pass-through. It just uh, maintains how you can, uh, you know, uh, how, the, how both systems can sync, which has re reduced all our development effort of syncing, bi-directional bi -directional syncing, and you know, all the REST calls, all the SOAP calls that we used to do before is not there anymore. And it's a uh, database, it's a device on the data, uh, database on the device which is embedded, so you always know the data is persistent and it won't be compromised. And it can, it is available on different operating systems. Um, so uh, I want to talk a little bit about our architecture. So if you see here, we use a Cordova plugin which is a JavaScript. We are totally a JavaScript-based shop. Uh, we moved everything from Android to JavaScript. And uh, I've been asking the Couchbase engineers here and product team when Cordova is available on 2.0. We are anxiously waiting for that. So basically, Cordova is write once and compile in multiple platforms, right? So it just creates a bridge. So your, you can invoke uh, your native uh, calls through uh, a JavaScript player. So it's just a bridge between your native ja .java or a, you know, iOS uh, Swift files that you just, uh, you know, it, it tries to uh, invoke it and renders everything in a web view. That's what Cordova does for you. Right, so it, it can run on any browser very easily. Uh, we use React.js. React.js is uh, developed and maintained by Facebook, and uh, it was a big learning curve for us, but I think our developers love it now. Uh, it's very, very good at rendering, and we use Redux as a state container. We manage state using Redux, and basically, we uh, the entire um, uh, structure is stored uh, is in a store, and you emit actions to uh, do any state changes and things like that. Uh, so this is the plugin that we use. So basically, when the users like our NPs, when they log on to our mobile app, right? So they only uh, uh, see the set of documents or tasks that they are supposed to see. So that is, we are accomplishing that through channel support. So the Couchbase uh, Lite, they, uh, when they log in, we log in again, uh, we authenticate against our LDAP. So once, we, once the authentication retains success, successful, we post that uh, user to Couchbase. 
And if the uh, Couchbase, if the user is already present in Couchbase, it doesn't create a new one. If it's not present, it updates the user and sends a valid session token back. And this session token is the most critical thing for uh, any syncing to happen. So the default session token is 24 hours. So as long as the session token is valid, you have the syncing going on between CBLite and Couchbase Server without any issues, right? So that is something uh, key for us. Uh, to have that session token validity of the session token. And whenever we create a user, so say I'm logging in as Preeti, so I get my access, so it, it depends on what you want to assign the user to. So when we look, create a user, I assign, uh, the user is given their own channels. So channel is just a virtual tag within Sync Gateway, within Couchbase. So literally it's as good as saying, uh, you know, channels, it's an array in the JSON and you say my name right, uh, my login name, so that's, it's as easy as that to do channel support. And I, uh, you can also define global channels, so if you see in the next slide, we have our, all our UI, which is a JSON-based UI, all our templates, nothing is hard-coded in our code, uh, all our JSON forms, we use JSON forms and React Renderer to render it, so all the users have access to a global channel called as templates or the forms. So you can see here um, how our devices connect. So we have multiple devices on the field uh, connecting through a load balancer. We have two instances of Sync Gateway and three instances of Couchbase Server. So as I said, the JSON forms are dynamic UI. So basically, today if I want to say, I want to add these, a client one says, I want to have these dynamic messages for these NPs, or this uh, out of 50 screens that we have, or 60 screens that we have, UI screens, I want to have five screens different for this client. So we just render that down through Sync Gateways, giving them access to the global channel. So whoever, if, the, if a user is looking at it, they, their UI gets rendered automatically. So we have no deployments. So that's how we uh, manage our UI and the templates. So all the dynamic uh, messages I spoke about and, uh, you know, uh, device, also all the data is captured in the device and it just syncs whenever uh, the users come online. So CB Light and Replicators, uh, we still use Coax library. I, I think we have to move away from that uh, whenever we get 2.0 built in to make REST calls. And the default, I, I, I'm not sure if anybody is like technical here but um, in this session, but if you are interested, this is how we do our push and pull replicators. We configure our replicators. So once the database and views are configured, the replicators are invoked within our application. And uh, there is an active task feed that you can see we are Sync Gateway, which tells you if your sync has been success, if, uh, suspended, it's paused, or you know, it's sync, sync has been completed and stuff like that. So this is your um, uh, push and pull replicators. It kicks off. So that's how it knows. I need to, my app has started now, and I have to start syncing between my uh, Couchbase servers. So, uh, so we use something called as local documents. If you are interested, if you want a document that, which doesn't have to be synced to the Couchbase server, you're using something with, for your logic internally, this doesn't get synced, so you just tag it as underscore local and you just uh, put the document within your CB light and it doesn't get synced at all. Uh, this is your Sync Gateway configuration. Uh, this is a service config.json on Sync Gateway, which you have your bucket name, uh, your username, and password. Of course, you don't put the password and store it somewhere. But So this is very, very critical. This is where you maintain what uh, users, if it's an admin role, what users can update the, update the documents, what users are role-based access, or anything you want to do with your... Uh, uh, access, you have to mention it here. And uh, we also use something called as a uh, webhook. So like eventing, right? We spoke about eventing in Couchbase server like 5.5. You're anxiously waiting on it uh, uh, so, so that we don't have to do the polling. But actually, Sync Gateway provides something like webhook, which is a little bit like eventing. So th there is a value of JS, uh, uh, a key value, right? And if the value is something, uh, like abandon this, or if a value is like process these documents, so it, based on a value within the JSON document, you can actually post it to a REST endpoint, you can post it to your messaging queue, and that can go on from there. But you have to be careful because there are no retries. There is, no retry has been built in, so it's like uh, you send it once and forget about the request. If you, it's very good if you are posting it to a queue or something like that. So when the, da when the data is syncing back, it starts, uh, you can actually post it to wherever you want it to. 
Uh, so one more thing which we have been very, very successful at is that since we are into healthcare, we deal a lot of uh, PDFs. So we have different apps where you know, some PDFs, uh, gen the apps different medical test results and it generates PDFs, right? So with our legacy, we had a lot of issues where so the PDFs get stored somewhere in an Android uh, device. And we have services to go look for the PDF and attach it to the particular visit. And then in the back end reconciliation process, you don't know which member's PDF it is. So we used to have constant trouble in production. So once we started using Couchbase uh, syncing, Attach, uh, you can sync the attachment, you can tie it to your document. We have not had any such issues and they have been very, very happy that they know that, oh, this is the PDF for this member and they don't have to go elsewhere. So it is actually within your document. It's just the tag as underscore attachment and you can get the attachments uh, uh, attached to your document. So uh, key benefits, as I said, uh, automatic sync, no code changes. I mean, we can really do a deployment, change your UI dynamically in production. Uh, of course, we have, we'll go through testing without any code changes. Real-time JSON flexibility, so the clients get what they want, what kind of data they want. We don't have to like tell them, hey, you can't get this because our schema doesn't support it. Nickel queries, which we have used a lot for our backend services to go poll the data and do some kind of report reporting on it uh, to do our HEDIS measures and whatnot. Uh, so this is another very critical thing that we use this for. So basically, when the, when the, when the user submits their uh, uh, charts or assessments, right, so uh, you, somebody has to review it and say if it is supporting, if it has supporting documentation, I just cannot go and say this member has this problem or this diagnosis, right? So somebody at the back end services is reviewing all the data and see if it is correct or not because we cannot falsify the data. So before moving to this, they did not have this error detection real time. So what we do right now is somebody looks at the data and they just go and update it. Uh, uh, maybe they change the status to um, uh, status of this document is rejected, right? So you get a higher revision on your Couchbase server that goes down straight onto their device and they see immediately that there is a problem with this document. There is a problem with the visit. They don't have to wait for a long time, uh, make a phone call and say, hey, there is something wrong with it. So uh, we can build, uh, once they're complete, the, so they complete, the, uh, co they correct the charts and send it back and we just immediately process it and we build it. So this, is, this workflow has really worked out very well for us. All we had to do was to just change the status or change a value within the same JSON document and it goes down straight into their device and say, hey, there is something wrong with this, which has reduced a lot of round trips. Um, so XDCR, we use XDCR to replicate data across. And uh, another thing too uh, is zero downtime. So we have our NPs working all seven days, 24 hours. We, we see data coming in at like 3 a.m., 2 a.m. on different time zones across the U.S., right? So, uh, and also we are high trust compliant. So we cannot have any, uh, we have to keep patching our servers. That means we have to keep restarting our boxes every month. Uh, which doesn't usually happen with Couchbase. Uh, usually, Couchbase never goes down. They, that's what they say, right? So, but we have to bring it down. But because we have a scale-out architecture, we just bring one node down. It still works with the other two nodes and bring the other one down. So they don't see any uh, downtime at all. They can work through all the way through. So Couchbase Light and Sync Gateway. I mean, we did not have any development effort for syncing. It was really great for us. Uh, always had the latest and greatest data, no, no latency at all. Once, as long as you're online, you get all the data. And Cordova plugin, the channel support is, was very critical. Otherwise, you will have to query which NPs has to see which appointment, so other NPs don't see it. So this channel support really, really helped us in expediting things. And flexible development and PDF like attachments, and we will do some images and you know barcodes uh, like scanning all this in the future. Um, so I just want to take a minute and talk about importance of technology and innovation. Right, as technology leaders, we all believe that your uh, uh, tech innovation is key to the business growth. Right, your technology is as successful as your business is. So. Um, what we did over the past uh, year was we successfully implemented a health assessment platform uh, to run our core business. So this is our bread and butter for the business. 
and we took a very big risk of moving all, because we had an application that was working for past five years, right? So we had to take that risk to move out and implemented this. Uh, and we did all of this in a span of eight to 10 months. And my team is sitting here. I'm so thankful to them. We have had very, very long days. And uh, our December was very, very critical because June 1st was the first day of our client rollout. First, one or we slowly started moving our clients. And all the clients, and 100% of the clients were rolled out on January 1st of 2018. Like that being said, like one of the top insurance companies in the United States. Uh, so we we took a risk of, we couldn't tell them that we are not giving you the data. We are not giving you uh, JSON. We are giving you XML. You have to go back to XML now. Because they had prepared all their systems to go on to JSON. And that was not an option at all. We could not back out. So we were in that state, and we successfully came out of it. So that is something I think phenomenal that our uh, my team and the you know we could do with this couch base with in the span of eight to ten months, and the good thing is since we were already in production right we we had they were using it for five plus years, so you cannot take away the features that they are already used to like the NPs are like they'll start screaming at you and the users will be like why did you take away these features so we had to build all the features it's not a new application for them. So we re-architected the whole thing for expanding our business and growth, but we had to give them every single feature that they had. So the features that we built over five plus years, we could deliver it in eight to 10 months because of the flexible JSON forms and data modeling. So all the health plans, we could roll them out in the span of six months. So there was a lot of, each account manager had to deal with all these insurance companies and talk to them. You know, tell them the benefits of the new platform, and we were able to convince them to roll onto the new platform. Because, and they are seeing the success now. They're seeing the benefits of the new platform, how much data, how um, how deep the data can go because of the flexible data modeling, right? And so we, uh, Matrix acquired LP Health and Healthfare this year, LP Health last year, uh, end of last year. So then that we, then we understood, okay, that was the push from our leaders to say, go on to this new platform so we can successfully merge all of them on a single platform. So we, we are using this platform as our one and only platform for moving all the acquisitions too. So I think that's really great. And uh, some uh, the others who have seen this platform, they say we want to go on to this platform. The insurance companies, I think we feel very happy that this has been very successful for Matrix. So with that, I end my uh, presentation. Any questions? Question back here. Um, uh, my name is Aditya. I represent Comcast here. So we had a question on the PDF attachments that you mm -hmm. mentioned. Where exactly these attachments are stored? Um, are, is this like sensitive data, I'm assuming? So is this encrypted or not? Uh, because we have a similar requirement in Comcast for PDFs okay. related to customer data. So um, all our data, so our operating, the Android OS itself is encrypted. So that's why I did not touch more on security because the tablet devices that the NPs use, they, they itself are encrypted, like nobody can unlock them. So when the PDF is getting transferred, we use SSL, HTTP, it's all on HTTPS and TLS 1.2. So we, we send that over and it, it is sitting in couch base, right? So the transfer happens on an encrypted layer. Yes. It is stored in Couchbase. It is stored system. in Couchbase, yes. The attachments, you see, it's stored on the disk. So that is within your document. And that's why it is, that is something which we could leverage very easily because we had a lot of issues with PDF syncing. Yeah. So is there a limitation as far as the size of the PDF that you, that you could store in Couchbase? I don't think there is any limitation. We get uh, like images. Uh, so it's pretty big. And right. we haven't seen any kind of uh, limitation so far. Yeah. Sorry, one last question. What what version of Couchbase are you guys? We are on four dot six. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Oh. Hi. Hi. I have a question about um, the project that you had for five years and then you did it in eight to ten months. Mm -hmm. What was the process like? Uh, like, you know, do you develop the new features? in parallel with the existing production. Yeah. And then you, um, how do you transition the users to the new platform? Yeah, so we did not, we had clients, we had to support two systems in parallel. 
So we ha we were giving cutoff dates for each client, and we would say on uh, from this day you will start getting this JSON uh, this JSON feed and this PDF feed because we couldn't cut that. So we had uh, like we stopped development on our legacy. We we only did very very critical enhancements if we had to. So we, the whole business was under under the uh, agreement that we are going to invest on this and we are not going to do any more development on that. But yes, of course, production is priority, so we had to support it. So we slowly started migrating clients over, and by January 1st, 100% of our clients are on this new platform now. And how many developers do you have working on this? We have around 8 to 10. Yeah. Other questions? All right. Great job. All right. Thank you.